now, let's join Ace Broadcaster Mamode Akuga as he takes us inside the Niger Delta. Hello out there and welcome to the program. It's Inside the Niger Delta, the authentic voice of Nigeria's oil-rich region. I'm your regular host, Mamode Akuga. In today's package, we take a look at issues bordering on Nigeria's ailing petroleum industry as well as security and development challenges in the Niger Delta. Our lead story focuses on the need to tackle infrastructure deficit in the Niger Delta, which was part of a 16-point demand made by leaders and elders of the region in their November 2016 meeting with President Muhammadu Buhari. Next in our lineup is a report on contributions of Honorable Fred Agbedi, member representing Sagba Maikirimo Federal Constituency in the House of Representatives to the development of infrastructure in backward communities in Bios State. Moving on, we we'll bring you the reactions of Niger Deltans to the recent award of a $1.5 billion contract for the rehabilitation of the Port Harcourt refinery. And finally, in today's package is a report on the people's expectations in the federal government's avowed commitment to establish modular refineries in the Niger Delta. Inside the Niger Delta, the authentic voice of Nigeria's oil-rich region will be back after this timeout. Don't go away. Niger Delta Development Commission, NDDC, determined to make a difference. Welcome back. It's Inside the Niger Delta, the authentic voice of Nigeria's oil-rich region. One of the 16-point demands made by the Pan-Niger Delta Forum, Pandev, to guarantee rapid development and lasting peace in the Niger Delta in its November 2016 meeting with President Muhammad Buhari was an urgent need to provide critical infrastructure in the region. The federal government's inability to address crumbling infrastructure in the Niger Delta over four years after Pandev's meeting with President Buhari is giving inhabitants of the region cause for worry, as correspondent Tekana Miofori reports. In their November 2016 meeting with President Buhari, leaders and elders of the Niger Delta demanded commencement and completion of the following projects, East-West Coastal Road, East-West Road Reconstruction and Dualization, Bodoboni Road, Ibom Deep Seaport, and Development of Inland Waterways. In its 16-point demand, Pandef also urged the federal government to remove bottlenecks militating against activation and utilization of existing seaports in the Niger Delta, located in Port Harcourt, One, Wari, and Calabar. Pandev's call for resuscitation of the four seaports in the Niger Delta, which are among six largest seaports in the country, was to address a skewed policy on ports administration. As a result of the federal government's inability to revive seaports in the region, the Apapa and Tinkan ports in Lagos State have continued to handle around 80% of shipping traffic in the country. This trend has given rise to congestion at the Lagos seaports, and gross underutilization of seaports in the Niger Delta. You have a scenario whereby we're, we're just locked up with just two functional ports in Apapa and Tinken. Now, Apapa and Tinken had outshot its existing capacity, its inbuilt capacity. Vessels call Nigeria, they spend a lot of money to be able to, what they call, to be able to evacuate their goods. So sometimes it goes as far as those vessels actually call in Ghana, Tema in Ghana, to go afloat in Ghana. Now when they offload in Ghana, they now have to wait for a space for clearance from Lagos before they call Nigeria. And who bears the cost? It's the end user. All the revenue generation is accruing to Lagos alone, apart from the federal government allocation. So what we are losing here is enormous. And when you travel to Lagos, you clear your car and you pay revenue to Lagos State, we are losing a lot economically. The non-completion of the Bodoboni Road construction project, conceived over 40 years ago to connect several communities in River State to the nation's economic nerve center of Boni Island, is also giving most Niger Deltans cause for worry. Contracts for the construction of this all-important road 
was awarded over 16 years ago by the government of President Olusegun Obasanjo, but could not be completed by successive administrations. In February 2016, the Nigerian liquefied natural gas NLNG offered 50% payment of the 120 billion naira required to fund the project under a tripartite agreement, yet it remains uncompleted till date. Imagine completing Bodo Boni Road, the multiplier effect of just completing that road on the economy. And then don't forget, government stands a better chance because it increases revenue generation. So you see, but because we are not a government that are innovative about internal generated revenue, their whole attention is on the petrol dollar, the one that is easy to get. So as long as the pipes traverse the length and breadth of the place and connect Boni and export the crude, the road is very is almost non-important to them. Given the number of uncompleted federal government projects in the Niger Delta, the region's leaders have come to the conclusion that their November 2016 meeting with Mr. President is yet to produce fruitful results in their quest to have the Niger Delta transformed. If those issues had been addressed, the, the narrative would have changed. But unfortunately, out of the 16 items, as we speak today, we, will, we, we have only two items as it were, one and a half attended to. That's the Maritime University of Korenkoko and then the Ogoni Cleanup. Um, the status is not unclear, uh, it's unclear to us now. Over the years, administrative neglect of the Niger Delta has been evident in the federal government's dysfunctional allocation of resources to develop the entire country at the expense of the region. In spite of the negative externalities of prolonged oil exploration and production in the Niger Delta, the bulk of resources generated from oil-producing communities has been utilized to develop other parts of the country, notably the federal capital territory of Abuja. Abuja was developed with oil, not the fiscal cash. Initial plan was $25.6 billion, and today they have spent well over $300 billion. Abuja is still being developed. It is annoying. It is highly provocative. Recently, we hear the president also inaugurated, you know, the narrow, you know, gauge, you know, railway from here to my degree. And our own, they are giving us narrow, you know, gauge. Meanwhile, Ibadan to uh, Lagos and to Kano, they are talking about standard gauge. That's to tell you how insincere the federal government has been and very unfair to the Nigerian territory. In response to recommendations in the Willings Commission Report of 1958, which designated the Niger Delta a difficult terrain in need of special attention and accelerated development, the federal government has in the last 60 years established several agencies to tackle infrastructure deficits in the region. Unfortunately, all of such agencies have failed to improve quality of life in the region on account of administrative lethargy and poor funding. Consequently, the government of President Muhammad Buhari is enjoined to demonstrate the political will to develop the region by acceding to PANDEF's demand for commencement and completion of critical infrastructure in the region. Infrastructure is key you know, to economic development. When you have adequate infrastructure, it means that uh, cost of business will fall. I give you an example. If you have the east-west road, you know, properly done, and the lanes are working very well, it will definitely reduce the cost of business. Basically, um, the delay, you know, the long delay in completing this, you know, infrastructure is actually retarding in economic development in the Niger Delta region. Oil resources generated in the Niger Delta account for about 80% of government's revenues and 90% of Nigeria's exports. Under the Nigerian law, the control of oil resources is the exclusive preserve of the federal government. Faced with the predicament of crumbling infrastructure, oil-producing communities have over the years clamored for the operation of fiscal federalism to enable them have a fair share of Nigeria's oil wealth and allow other regions of the country to develop at their own pace. It is for them a just demand that the federal government must consider as a matter of urgency to allow common humanity prevail in the allocation of resources generated in their domain. Inside the Niger Delta.
member representing Sagbama Ikrimo Federal Constituency in the House of Representatives, Honorable Fred Agbedi, has rejected a constituency project for the renovation of a primary school in Letugbene community, a Kirimo local government area of Bias State, for failing to meet required specifications. The federal lawmaker took this decision while on a routine inspection of projects in his federal constituency, which he insists must not be shortchanged in his quest for development. Correspondent Lovely Ofigo has more. Honorable Agbede recently traversed Sagbama Ekerimo federal constituency on a routine inspection of his constituency projects. Some of the projects were a library traditional council complex, construction of roads connecting several communities in Sagbama Ekerimo federal constituency, a primary school in Sagbama local government area, and renovation of a UBA school at Letugbene in Ekerimo local government area of Bayosu State. While in Letugbene community, where he went to inspect progress of work on the renovation of a dilapidated primary school, Honorable Agbedi took exception to the quality of work done by the contractor. He was full of regrets that the materials procured for the renovation were substandard while the project was being executed without a bill of quantity. The six-classroom block renovation project was initiated by Honorable Agbedi after the building was deroofed by a storm about a year ago. Since then, the school has been shut, leaving many pupils stranded. I know my budgetary provision for this project. And in whatever dimension that this work is done to achieve quality, the contractor will never run at a loss. And so I'm calling on border commission of the Federal Republic of Nigeria to either withdraw this job or to ensure that the proper specifications are given. The challenges that are in this building that require the renovation are properly identified and taken care of so that the contractor who will spend Nigeria's money meaningfully is mandated to come and execute this project. Responding to Agbedi's outburst, engineer on site who represents Rufelix Nigeria Limited explained that it was only following instructions given to him in the execution of the project. I was sent here, a kind of uh, site agent, go and do the job. It was based on instruction. No document, no, no. They have told me what to do, what I'm what to do. So there's no, no uh, attached paper with me. Oh, your brain has everything. No, when they say change the zinc, when they say this, it's, 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 everybody can have it in the hands inside. The chain they does to iron doors, the, the ceiling, the one they told us to replace, the painting, I know the color they told itself you paint, and some patches there on the walls. It was a more cheering scene on site during inspection of the Amazo Age Ubentu Amatu Road construction project. The 25-kilometer road, designed to connect several isolated coastal communities in Sagbama Ekerimo Federal Constituency, was initiated to address transport and communication hiccups in the area. To alleviate the plight of communities, Agbedi, through his constituency project, had taken upon himself to open five kilometers of the entire stretch for use by the communities in the first phase of the project. Very excited, happy about what the contractor, uh, Tobo Technologies Limited, has uh, done on site. We are very happy about it. We are so encouraged and uh, we believe that uh, this is going to set another mark of development. Beneficiaries of the road project describe it as unprecedented in their respective communities and call on the federal and state governments to key into it to ensure its successful completion. This is a great project and we are very, very happy as I'm talking to you. Everyone here, both young and old, we are very, very happy. If we come to talk about the economic value of this road, in fact, we cannot uh, quantify it. All we can say for now is to appeal to either the state government, NDDC and other development agencies. Let them come to assist in this project. Or completely even take over. Because this is a project that touches the very life of the people in this island. During his recent inspection tour of projects in Sagbama Ekermo Federal Constituency, Agbedi noted that all projects must be delivered on record time and in strict compliance with specification.
He said it had become imperative to follow due process in the execution of projects to provide succor for scores of communities that had existed without basic social amenities for too long. Inside the Niger Delta Heritage Bank Service Performance Respect Integrity Innovation Tenacity Excellence Heritage Bank Your Timeless Wealth Partner Azekiel Group Oil and Gas Dredging Power and Air Transportation Azekiel Group Petroleum Product Sufficiency Energy Sustainability and Infrastructure Development Opponents of the recent award of a $1.5 billion contract for the rehabilitation of the Port Harcourt refinery in the Niger Delta have faltered its process and intention, describing it as inimical to national economic growth and well-being of Nigerians. In their agreement with other Nigerians, they further opposed the circumstances surrounding the rehabilitation of the Port Harcourt refinery while calling on the federal government to have a rethink in its decision, which they insist is not in national interest. Correspondent Chika Abudozi completes the story. As part of efforts to ensure full capacity utilization for the Potakot refinery, the federal government recently approved $1.5 billion for its rehabilitation. The contract awarded to Italian engineering firm Technimont SPA is expected to be executed in three phases, spanning a period of eight years. The federal government says the rehabilitation of Potakot refinery is the first major step taken to end many years of massive fuel importation, which has adversely affected the Nigerian economy. Consistent with ongoing reforms in the petroleum industry, the government intends to privatize the Potakot refinery after its rehabilitation, a decision that does not go down well with some Nigerians. That's an issue which I feel is government fixing and selling to themselves because I don't see how you will use such an amount of money to to fix a, you know, a refinery and now sell it off again. Why are they selling it? Why not sell it in the first place than use 1.5 billion or 1.7 billion to now repair it and now sell it off again? It doesn't make sense. The better you sell it and get the money down for you to renovate and then sell. Renovate a refinery of $1.5 billion and then sell it again. It's not going to make sense. Nigeria's four refineries, whose combined capacity utilization is currently in the neighborhood of 20%, have been poorly managed and maintained in the last 15 years. If revived to operate at full capacity, the four refineries would refine about 428,000 barrels of crude per day whereas the aggregate demand of petroleum products in the country was put at about 750,000 barrels of crude per day in 2017. What it means is that even if the four refineries are working at full capacity, which is something that is not attainable, it can't even guarantee local consumption. So if we are talking about uh, trying to uh, rehabilitate Portacol refinery alone, it's just like dropping water in a desert. Following events of 2012, when President Goodluck Jonathan unsuccessfully attempted to deregulate the downstream sector of the petroleum industry, a National Refineries Task Force was set up to investigate the moribund state of Nigeria's four refineries. In its report, the task force recommended that the government should relinquish control of the refineries by divesting a majority of its 100% equity to competent, resourceful and experienced partners in the transparent process in accordance with the Privatization and Commercialization Enterprises Act of 1991. We expected that we have uh, people, uh, government will advertise that and both local and foreign uh, companies will bid for that so that you have a competitive process. But uh, there was nothing like that. Uh, nobody knows what, how they arrive at that figure. The Portugal refinery and other refineries um, 
I've seen, uh, I've witnessed several other awards of contracts for turnaround maintenances that never saw the light of the day. To those who, you know, took it with a pinch of salt are not to be blamed because of the experiences of the past. Over the years, high costs of fuel importation has resulted in a phenomenal increase in the pump price of petrol from 57 Naira in June 2014 to 165 Naira in March 2021. At the receiving end of incessant hikes in the price of petrol are the masses, particularly workers at the lowest cadres of federal and state civil service. With the benefit of hindsight, most Nigerians resident in the Niger Delta are not convinced that the $1.5 billion earmarked for rehabilitation of the Potakot refinery would make any difference in addressing Nigeria's current energy crisis. They would therefore want the federal government to explore available alternatives and possibly invigorate its policy of establishing modular refineries to fill huge gaps in the production of petroleum products and meet increasing demands for fuel across the country. Inside the Niger Delta Participants at a recent summit held in Uyo Akwaibom State to sensitize host communities on equitable participation in the petroleum industry have called on the federal government to subsidize the cost of owning and operating modular refineries in the Niger Delta. The call follows Vice President Iemi Osibajo's recent declaration that the federal government does not have the financial muscle to underwrite the cost of establishing modular refineries across the country. Speaking virtually at a recent stakeholders meeting on integration of artisanal crude oil refiners into the mainstream of the petroleum industry, Vice President Yemi Ushibajo maintained that contrary to public expectations, the federal government could not afford to shoulder the financial burden of establishing modular refineries in the country. The transition from artisanal refineries to modular refineries has been delayed because of the operator's expectation that this process will be fully underwritten by a government. However, what this framework envisages is a private sector-led partnership with equity participation from the state governments or its agencies, registered local cooperative societies, and the integration of regional refinery stakeholders with a private investor having majority equity. This is the sustainable model. The vice president's position was a departure from the promise he made in February 2017 that the federal government would build modular refineries to discourage proliferation of artisanal refineries in the Niger Delta and provide jobs for unemployed youths in the region. At the recent summit in Uyo, the Akwaibom state capital, Participants reminded the federal government that host communities in the Niger Delta do not have the financial capacity to own and operate modular refineries. Licensing, it requires a lot of money that people in the, you know, in, in the host communities you know, cannot achieve. So that is something that is key that government must look into. With the government's inability to deliver the long-awaited modular refineries, more jobless youths are getting involved in artisanal crude oil refining to eke out a living under very harsh conditions in the Niger Delta. It is just for government to assist us, to guarantee us either through bank loan or whatever. We can't continue with what we are doing. It's not environmental friendly. As the federal government moves to address the crisis of energy deficiency in the country, its attention has been drawn to efforts made over the years by artisanal crude oil refiners to make petroleum products available for local consumption. If you go to the petrol stations, most of the filling stations, what they are selling, is from those boys. So what are we talking about? So we need to, government must look into it. The federal government must look into that. And once that is done, it will even arrest you know, the restiveness of use. The call on the federal government to subsidize costs of owning modular refineries is also hinged on the fact that it would guarantee equitable participation for host communities in the petroleum industry. Inside the Niger Delta. And with our report, 
will draw the curtain on the program. Inside the Niger Delta, the authentic voice of Nigeria's oil rich region will be back same time, same station next week. Until then, you can follow us on our social media handles showing right now on your screen. Until next week, I am Mamode Akuga thanking you for staying with us. Bye for now. Thank you.